One of the other topics we'd like to cover is DNO insurance. It's a very big issue nowadays. When you think DNO insurance, you might think of it in the classic sense. It covers directors and officers of the company. So if I'm sitting on the board of a company, I want DNO insurance. Why do I want it? In case some other Yahoo brings me into a lawsuit and I got to deal with it, I don't want my personal assets having to pay lawyers to cover that. In fact, I'm doing you a favor. I'm sitting on your board. I'm giving you advice. You're paying me some small amount of money for it, but I'm I'm basically stepping up and doing, trying to do something good for your company. And that's why I'm sitting on your board. So that's sort of the perspective of, of a board member. At the same time, you say, you guys should buy, you people should buy me insurance. I need to have insurance. So what do you buy? You buy DNO insurance, director and officer insurance. And that's at its core is to cover the D's and O's, directors and officers. So you may think of it in that context. And if that was the only context that the insurance covered um, might be a much simpler issues to deal with because directors and officers would dictate what kind of insurance they wanted and they would get that insurance and if the directors and officers ever got into trouble then they deal with it. What happened years ago is the insurance industry realized that obviously a director and officer isn't going to get sued alone most likely. He's going to get sued along with the company. He or she will get sued along with the company. So you got a lawsuit against the company and the directors and officers. One lawsuit. Well, what's a DNO policy going to do? It got into all these issues as to, well, how do you divide up defense? It's a defense. It's a 100% defense. We can't cut it in half. We can't separate the individuals from the company. So the better insurance company said, we got a way to deal with that. We'll just cover everybody. Fine and simple. We'll cover the company. We'll cover the Ds. We'll cover the Os. We'll cover them all. And that's called pure entity coverage. If you have that coverage, first of all, you're going to be a non-public company. But if you're a non-public company with DNO insurance and it's got pure entity coverage, you're golden. It covers most every kind of wrongful act under the sun, unless excluded. So anything the company does wrong, covered, unless excluded. There's a series of exclusions, but, the, but it's the broadest possible coverage you can buy. So I'm making this argument to this um, judge of um, 40 years uh, in a mediation. I said, Your Honor, um, this coverage is exceedingly broad. It covers all wrongful acts of the company, unless excluded. And he just looks up from his glass and he's like, oh. And then I keep going on. I said, here's how broad it is. And I'm giving him examples. I'm telling him how broad it is. He pulls his glasses off and he looks at me and he says, do you realize what you're saying? I said, I certainly do, Your Honor. That's our point. He goes, no, no, that's, that's not what I'm thinking about. What I'm thinking about is if you're right, just think how much that insurance would cost. I was like, stop, you're going the wrong direction. His point was, he didn't quite believe how broad it was because in our situation, the company had paid $20,000 for the policy. He's like, you, you pay 20,000 for this and you want 20 million in coverage, I don't get it. The bottom line is, it's a fact. The coverage is that broad. It's the first place you need to look if you're a non-public company for any sort of a lawsuit against the company.